Yep. And um, probably because he didn't want to admit or not admit to it. Um, anyway, I was just wondering, just reading the agency and and all of that, since that was never disclosed to me, and then I signed the form, and she did sign for him. I am going to challenge that based on the fact that it was non-disclosure. Um, and by the way, why? How could she offer to? sign on their behalf and then not offer to sign on my behalf. Doesn't that legally bind her to the case yes, now does. as but an it, agent? It does. And and, and what, you, what you're, you're dealing with is their system has become so automated that they, they don't even think it's an issue. I mean, it's mm. so procedural now, they don't think it's an issue. And because no one challenges it, they don't even really think of it as a, as a problem. But the revelation on agency tonight, I hope, is going to help a lot of people and, and, and also help with you. What you're doing, great work you're doing, Dawn, still, is that um, we need to rebut and challenge the presumptions of agency. Mm-hmm. And, well, and I, have we to get something, yeah. I have to get something in tomorrow. But this was very shocking, and I did have a witness. Um, Greg, who I sent you some information for you to review, he was my witness that day. He came as a friend. And um, I did put my name, you know, I signed it with my dot, 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 meaning I had more to say but was not going to be allowed to say it at that hearing. Yeah. And and I did, just to let other people know, she had on that form um, defendant's attorney, and I said, um, excuse me, you have to amend that. I can't sign that. I can't falsely represent to be something I am not. And she looked at me very strangely. <laughs> but it's you have to be very careful. And I did have her amend the um, – just it was a scheduling hearing that I uh, did not waive any of my rights and that um, my motion had not been heard, and therefore that my appearance there was not in support of – um, the plaintiff as having standing and that I did not consent to that to be construed that way and I objected to it for the record. And she tried to convince you know, me that, oh, this is not for the record. And I said, ma'am, you are making a record of it right there with your computer. It's for the record. And um, just to give people some heads up that I, you know, just – Encountering it. And what about the fact that I have two disputes? They did get them certified mail and they never responded. I am. Well, this, um, this, is, this is typical. This is typical. I mean, mm -hmm. I think, I think where, you, where it starts to bite Dawn is when you start to pursue clear evidence of conflict of interest and uh -huh. yet you approach it from the perspective that you're going to give them a way out. I think there's two things. If you're going to go for the jugular, have in your kit bag the resolution for them that allows them to basically zero this out and, and shut it down. This is what I was saying about the accounting. I think we, we haven't spent enough time on the remedy and the importance in remedy of accounting. Remember, this is business for them. How do they, how do they resolve the uh, accounting um, side of the credit card, it's going back to the fact that we create the money, yeah? Well, I did challenge them in my motion to dismiss that they did not follow generally accepted accounting procedures or audits. And, and the judge wrote my, the, right, so my motion. So where we, where we, where we um, back it up, when the plaintiff is unwilling to divulge the full accounting and interest and position they hold, mm -hmm. then... As, as an executor of the estate, they're creating an injury, aren't they? I mean, ultimately, an injury has been created. We've got to give the court... I mean, it sounds terrible to say that we've got to give a Roman court anything, but understand that, that one of the fail-safes that they built in right throughout their system that mm -hmm. stops the court having a choice is if the accounting doesn't balance up, they can't close the book. Follow? Right. They can't dismiss a case unless they can offset the debt. Yeah. All debts must be paid. That's one of their, their mottos. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I would suggest that 
one of the unfinished elements within your... I would pursue absolutely the conflict of interest, but I'd also think about how you can present an offset for the debt, and this time using the injury. Yeah? As an executive, it's your time, Dawn. What are you charging them um, on your schedule of fees when you go to these hearings? Oh, I, I, I haven't done that yet. That's what I have to um, address. Because, I mean, if they put it this way, would you agree? And, and I, I'm, I'm spending the time because one a huge kudos to you, Dawn. A lot of people, you've helped a lot of people. Um, oh, thank you. I just want to. If you, if you if you think about this, if the credit card company divulged the fact that they um, securitized your agreement, yeah, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. insured your agreement, and they received payment back for that, yeah, yes, then there would probably be a net balance in your favour, wouldn't there? Yes. Okay. So if they had put that forward, there would be no case to answer, correct? Correct. Not only that, but the insurance policy that went with it too. Right. But there'd be no, there'd be no case to answer. So everything that's happened since has been a waste of the court's time and a waste of your time mm -hmm. because this plaintiff is submitting false and frivolous actions, correct? Correct. Okay. As an executor, is your time precious? Oh, absolutely. Does your state, along with every state, have they made by statute the fact that the executors may be compensated for official, official trust business? It looks like it, yes, from what I've read. Okay. So if you submit in the correct form a schedule of fees, compensation schedule of fees as an executor, yeah? Yes. Then your time can be, can be recompensed on this matter whether or not the plaintiff is doing the right thing. And if the court does not follow your instruction, then the court itself has to pay, right? Right. Now, so do I have to have my work. paperwork? Do I have to have my paperwork established first? Because yes. I have not gone through all of the processes like Lynn and Ron have. Yeah. Well, I, I would I would suggest to you that that would be a, a good start, so they know where you stand. And then mm -hmm. what you've then got is in front of them the justification. Look, I'm making the point because something I'm very conscious of is whenever we do things, if I make a mistake, I need to pay for it. I need to acknowledge that. If I, if I hit someone's car because of my driving, then I, I need to re make the repair. Would you agree? Ab absolutely. Okay. And if, and if I'm going to take a service, then I, I want to recognize that if I take that service and I fail to, to do something, then then I need to acknowledge my part. Agree? Right. But when we're talking about the credit card, we're talking about any service or indeed a mortgage, the issue here is that the plaintiff is not being full and forthright, are they? No, I don't even know if he actually represents the bank, Discover Bank. I doubt it. Right. So I think he, is... bought, he purchased the hearsay or evidence quote, what they right. think is alleged evidence of a debt. Right, so, so basically he's um, purchased a debt, he, he's basically prospecting. So these are the things that we don't even know, and in that case, absolutely, we need to, to, to pursue and defend. So Dawn, I would suggest have a look at how you present yourself as the, correctly as the uh, occupant of the Office of General Executor and okay. make sure the schedule of fees and give notice to them that you will be charging for your time because you've made it clear already that there's no case to answer because the accounting has been not presented. They're not following their job. They're not doing their job. Yeah? Mm hmm That's that's correct. Okay. Lynn was Lynn was suggesting I put that into an affidavit and do it in a negative averment and put that in tomorrow on the public record. 
so that then they can't throw it out of the court and then annex it to my motion. Yeah, but I would do that in addition to. Remember, I mean, the, the, the record is a record of a hearing of trustees, trustees that are supposed to work for the executor. You're the executor, yeah? Right, right. Okay. If you own the restaurant and you have staff, they're supposed to cook the meal, correct? That's correct. You're not supposed to go in there, um, wave to the staff, jump in the kitchen, get in an apron, cook the meal, run out, sit down, eat it, and then pay the staff for their time, right? <laughs> right. And that's what you're doing when you do an affidavit and all of that. I, I think it's I think it's it's a backstop, yeah, sure. But write to them. Yeah? Okay. I I, mean, I um it, I, I, I assure you on this point, and, I'll, and I hope you don't mind, but we've got to keep, keep going, John, but I'm sure mm-hmm. people find all of these things relevant to them. Just remember, when, you, when you're on top of the knowledge and you can demonstrate competency with the knowledge, then that's the thing they'll click on. Whether you send it to them by carrier pigeon, when you say face-to-face, they'll get it, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's the end point. I mean... The, the procedure is always secondary. That's why when you go to court, the judge looks you in the eye, the prosecutor looks you in the eye, the people in the court look you in the eye. They're sizing you up, Dawn. Right. And when they know, on a sec, she knows this now, do you think they're going to pursue it? I would hope that they wouldn't want to pursue it, knowing that uh, how I just handled that scheduling hearing. That's right. Well, this is the this is the key. So, all the best, Dawn, and look, thank you so much for coming on, and you are a fantastic, fantastic person for what you're doing. Thank you. Oh well, thank you. You have a good evening. You're welcome. Okay. Bye bye. Good day. Okay, I'm going to get back to a couple more questions here, um, and thanks so much for that. Look, first off, if I interrupted a caller and I and I was picked out there by um, uh, one of the callers there, that one of the type, people typing that I interrupted some of the quote. I'm sorry for that. I, I try not to do that. And uh, I just ask for, for the issue that was raised, which was um, uh, some of the prime material. If that can be put on U- University of Ucadia. Uh, again, I'm sorry if I cut anyone short in the uh, live calls. Um, so I've got um, a couple of questions here. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, a question is um, the souls that are being held or cursed by the uh, Holy See um, are we uh, are we able to trace the family trees and become executives of those trusts there's a lot of history in, in, in the covenant and in the spiritual side where we recognise that the present system albeit ignorant of its own heritage was based on foul, dark, black magic. Um, What we as uh, men and women today, uh, if we are to... Firstly, curses have been broken, and those curses have been broken by a simple fact. The existence of a covenant of one heaven demonstrates a new covenant exists. Um, The very fact that it exists means that it cannot be disputed. Whether people like it or, or don't like it, that's a dispute of its content, but it exists. And because of it exists, certainly the curses and claims of the of um, the Roman cult are ended. The same as the canons. The fact that the books of canon law exist means that the Roman cult cannot claim to be uh, undisputed in terms of its claims of uh, canon law. We are disputing the canon law. Why? Because the canons of law of UK to exist. So uh, as individuals, we don't necessarily have to step in and do anything extra other than hopefully live and behave as honourable men and women. I've got a question here before we go to the next caller. Uh, The question is, in Sydney, I I want to send send a parking ticket with the words no contract on the back and maybe. What statute defines this form? Your thoughts. Um... If you um, ob- obtain a, a parking ticket uh, and you wish to uh, dispute the parking ticket, 
Um, the uh, the statutes 